Welcome to the Hankels and McCoy Safety Handbook Video Learning Series. Today we're going to talk about jackhammer use. The written requirements are listed in Part 1, General Rules for All Employees, Section 15. Injuries to jackhammer operators and the public can occur in several ways. Here is a list of injuries and damages commonly seen. 1. Back and shoulder sprains and strains. 2. Crushed foot. 3. Pinched and crushed hand. 4. Lacerated fingers. 5. Hearing loss from loud noise. 6. Eye injury from flying projectiles or air hose release. 7. Electrical shock due to contact with underground energized electrical system. 8. Damage to the public from an unsecured unit falling off truck or trailer. Ask yourself, are these preventable? You're probably thinking yes. If you are, you're correct. When we asked employees who use jackhammers on a routine basis, their response was yes. No one using a jackhammer in a safe manner should suffer work-related injury. So, what can we do to prevent injuries when using a jackhammer? Let's review some precautions and safe work practices to follow to prevent injuries from jackhammers. For starters, always have on the basic PPE. Hard hat, safety glasses, cut resistant gloves, high visibility garment or safety vest, and safety toe work shoes plus metatarsal foot protection and hearing protection. Metatarsal foot protection and hearing protection are additional requirements when using a jackhammer. One special precaution. Note 15.1.20. Workers using jackhammers, digging bars, or other hand tools when working in proximity inside one call locates to electrical power lines shall wear insulated protective gloves and dig prudently, slow and easy. Refer to Locating All Utilities and Records Awareness, LARA, on HM Central for more information. Now, it's time to get to work. It is best to use a two-person lift when unloading and loading a jackhammer from its stored position. Jackhammers can weigh in excess of 50 to 80 pounds, and if lifted solo, over time, can be a contributing factor to a sore or injured back and shoulders. It's the at-risk worker that does everything by themselves. Never be afraid to ask for help. And more importantly, if someone asks for help, be a friend and lend a hand. Your teamwork is mission critical. Store the jackhammer in a designated storage spot with a latch pin or other securing device in place. Failure to store correctly can result in the jackhammer becoming dislodged, falling and striking an employee, the public, or someone's personal property, such as a vehicle. Now let's hook up the jackhammer to the pneumatic power hose. Make sure the power is off and connect the hoses. After connecting the hoses, position the hose restraint device so it is attached to the jackhammer and the hose. Then, install the locking pin, or what may be referred to as the OSHA pin. Failure to secure the hoses and provide the restraint device can result in the hoses coming loose. A loose hose can whip and strike a worker or equipment, causing severe, if not life-altering, damage. Reminder, always disconnect the jackhammer from the pneumatic hoses or power source when performing maintenance or other service. Housekeeping and tool control cannot be understated. Always keep the pneumatic hoses in control and out of the worker's stable footing. Keep unnecessary debris from the work area. Keeping a clean and orderly work area can prevent trips and falls. Operating a jackhammer requires practice. Here is a jackhammer operator scoring and cutting a line using an asphalt spade. The operator makes it look easy. Note. A utility locate call was made and the utilities were marked and identified. This is also listed on the daily job briefing. Let the jackhammer do the work. There is no need to lean or force the jackhammer into the material you are cutting. A light but secure hand grip is all that is needed. Failure to hold on to the jackhammer can cause it to fall and strike your feet or other objects. Always keep your feet out of the line of fire. Even good operators can get a bit stuck. 
This should not be a concern. If a bit gets stuck, here are a few things to do to get it free. Number one, do not use extreme pulling force using your shoulders and back. You may not feel it right away, but over years of abuse, injuries could happen. Number two, rock the tool back and forth with the power on. Number three, abandon the stuck bit in place by removing the jackhammer from the bit and replacing it with a new bit. Continue cutting and retrieve it later when the bit has become loose or worked free. There is one thing we forgot to tell you. This technique requires extra bits to be on the truck. Hmm, check for extra bits before we leave the yard in the morning. So, let's refresh. Injuries to jackhammer operators and the public can occur in several ways. Here is a list of injuries and damages commonly seen. 1. Back and shoulder sprains and strains. 2. Crushed foot. 3. Pinched and crushed hand. 4. Lacerated fingers. 5. Hearing loss from loud noise. 6. Eye injury from flying projectiles or air hose release. 7. Electrical shock due to contact with underground energized electrical system. 8. Damage to the public from an unsecured unit falling off truck or trailer. If you have forgotten the safe work practice and precautions in this video, watch it again and then practice some hands-on exercises under the supervision of a competent operator. Always refer to your safety handbook section 15 for jackhammer use. So please, do your part, follow the rules, and look out for one another. Remember, nobody gets hurt.